Hi there, guys. I know normally we do Facebook Live on Mondays and Thursdays, but uh, I was I I came down to South Florida where uh, to to actually work, uh, coach in a on a communications course here in the Fort Lauderdale area, and also just kind of get reconnected with those uh, with people who were impacted by those. Uh, all of the people, all of the students who died in that Valentine's Day high school massacre, and um, and it's it was really quite moving. I, I spoke to one mother. She knew someone. Um, well, it was she knows of people, families who were personally um, who went to the school. The children went to the school, and uh, and all that. It definitely shook everybody up because it was to very unexpected. Um, it was interesting. One mother I spoke to, she she's put herself in a program, a very uh, rigorous program, and it, it's really taken her away from her children. And this thing, and a lot of times we do that as parents, we're trying to, maybe we didn't go to college before we had children. And for a time we have to to kind of split the time. We have to be the best parent we can be and, and also try to, to lay a good foundation for the future of our children. Um, and it, it makes it really hard. And uh, I know uh, last night she was, she was sharing her heart and crying and, and saying, you know, how can I, like, I'm doing all of this for my children and what if one of my children was gone and I didn't have a chance to say, I love you and, and that you're important to me. So it was, it was really moving. I, I'm going to spend the rest of the weekend work uh, talking to the other families that were, that were impacted by the Parkland high, the high school in Parkland, Florida, uh, impacted by that. It definitely made its waves uh, in South Florida and um, South Florida doesn't get, well, I tell you, it was just like the second time that in the last few years that something very devastating, besides hurricane, uh, has impacted South Florida. And um, and one of them where there was a shooter that came to the Fort Lauderdale Airport. I don't know if you uh, keep up with the news, but that was another one thing. Uh, and that was interesting because that happened to be a weekend that I was coming in and the weekend before I flew into that airport, so that was kind of a little bit um, sort of hits home. It's very close to home. Um, yeah. So one of the things I learned about this the shooter, the high school uh, the shooter, when he was nineteen, and uh, one of my children is nineteen. And I, what I'm really clear about is as much as they want to be called a man, the uh, in my estimation, my 19 year old is my son, my boy, and uh, has a long ways to go before um, being a man. And uh, the other thing is, is, is not to not to um, disrespect the families who've been who've been hurt and damaged by this person. But there's been a lot of a lot of the system has failed this person this this kid that turned into a mass murderer he, the system failed him first of all his biological parents they they let him down um i know that he he was in foster care and he was adopted um and having worked as a guardian ed light um i've done a lot of trainings and understanding that um, the the trauma that uh, children in foster care go to through endure endure they endure uh, they have abandonment issues and all kinds of fears and maybe even mental health disorders and and just so it's such an overabundance of the, the state moving them around like puzzle pieces and and just and that they never really get solidly grounded in a secure family in the moment that they get in a secure family and they and they have an outburst and upset or whatever they get discarded the foster parent can't handle it and the foster parents like you need to replace you know 
you need to find a different placement for this child. So then the child starts over dealing with rejection and abandonment. I mean, and it's just, it's a time bomb waiting to happen. And you, and you wonder, uh, and I know that the foster system is just so overwhelmed that they, that a lot of the people who really had their heart into the job, which is why they became employed by foster system and uh, the children and uh, child services and stuff like that. They're so, it's so overwhelming that all they can do is to numb themselves from the pain that they've of, of the, the, the children's circumstances and, and stuff like that, because they feel like it's, uh, it's a broken system that they cannot fix. So that's one of the issues. The other issue was the fact that his, his adoptive father had died previously and his, and the only other person that he could call his mother died in the fall. Um, and then a family took him in and uh, tried to to make it all better and um, you know they did the best they could there's all these people in in this person's life and by the time that this kid turns by the time the kids 19 he'd experienced so many losses so much damage that um, that some of this stuff was almost profilable and predictable, which is really, really sad and heartbreaking. Uh, I, and since I then there's only, there's only so much I can do as an advocate. Uh, I do what I can. And, um, to my last breath, I will do what I can, but what I, but, but what I can do now is to be of service to you in going through your custody situations so that I can help support you, support you and with the ultimate goal of trying to get you past the, the hump of the pain and the emotion and the, the turmoil of this without accidentally stepping on the landmines that are like irre irreparable, like being tempted to, to you know, out of fear, but, you know, filing abuse allegations or, or domestic violence or whatever that basically puts the trust further and further and further away from uh, each parent. So, so that there's, there's no trust. And then that child is in the middle of this swamp of, of, of nastiness. And, uh, and that's what they remember from their childhood. Um, I know that there's some things I post that you may not be easy to receive, but understand that the things that I say to you, I say in love and understanding and not, not expecting the, the one parent who's supposed to rise above to become a doormat. That's not what I'm, what I'm an advocate for. What I'm a, an advocate for is, uh, is creating harmony and workability and trying to get you to understand by reframing situations, uh, relationships. A lot of times when you reframe them into a non-emotional relationship context, a lot of times we can see, oh, I can see the flaws in my thinking now. So, um, so anyways, I just wanted to, since I left my last uh, Facebook Live kind of short, quite a bit short, just from the emotional impact of what happened uh, on the, with the Valentine's Day massacre. I just wanted to reconnect with you and, um, and just share with you my heart. Uh, so, I'm, so I'm down here for a few days um, coaching people who've been impacted by, the, uh, by this tragedy and um, in hopes of making the world a better place. So um, have a great weekend, and I will see you on Monday evening on Custody Matters.